Hi, thank you for joining us today. We are The Clearest Advantage. And my name is Dawn Allen, and this is Michelle Wozneski. And what we like to do is get to know you. We'd like to share with you what it is that we do and basically have you understand why we're the ones that help you get the competitive edge for your business. So at Clearest Advantage, we like to help you increase your productivity and your resilience and your adaptability. We like to stop having you do business as ordinary and let you become the standard within your business and in your industry. We know that people from day to day um, are tired and kind of worn out from just going to work. They want something more than that. And we're looking for employers and businesses who want their people, their most valuable asset, to actually have their workday be some of their best days. We want them on their A game at all times so that you can have something different and you can have the clearest advantage for your industry. So we have a mission and we have a commitment to excellence and we have a commitment to having everyone be at their best through the daily struggles, through difficulties that arise, but just knowing how to be on your A game at any point in time. That's how we help you have the clearest advantage for your industry. My name is Michelle Wisniewski, and at Clearest Advantage, we have a unique blend of businesses. So my background is in chaplaincy, it's in financial services, strategic planning. And so what I realized was that people wanted to, when they went through various experiences, they wanted to be able to bounce back. They wanted to be able to be at their best and understand how to do that. So Dawn, with her background in psychology, we merged together because we noticed that there were some significant events that were happening consistently out in the marketplace and that other consultants didn't have the answer. So Dawn, would you like to share more about your background? Yes, so I am trained as a licensed psychologist, and I have been doing this for more than 20 years. We are in business because we want to change the way you think about coming to work. We want to train and work with staff and leadership to be able to reach new levels of excellence. And it's our mission to ignite an excitement in every person and every organization so that you can see the power that you have in your gifts and talents and then leverage that power to be able to generalize a level of excellence to your life, to the work environment, and to every area. And that leads to a person being more resilient, more adaptable, more productive. It increases the company's bottom line and it brings teams together. My educational background started off with my degree in finance. I loved helping people solve problems. Then I got a Master's of Divinity because in helping people solve problems, I realized I could help them with the numbers, but people just aren't numbers. People are people. They have um, needs that need to be met mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So with the pastoral counseling background, it allowed me actually to give a strategy that was really holistic. So my background really complemented my business experience that I had. It's developing strategies so the people are able to be consistent, recover, and be successful. And uh, I was trained as a licensed psychologist, um, and I earned my doctorate degree uh, many years ago, um, more than 20 years ago now. And when I entered into the field of psychology, most people think of just therapy, but that was never the case. Um, I was consistently uh, consulting, coaching, as well as doing counseling. And I found myself wearing many hats and enjoying that. I did a lot of training. I did a lot of educating. And initially, organizations and people would have me come in and they were thinking, working with their staff, working with their employees, or helping this individual. And on most occasions, by the time I got done working with the person or the organization, I found myself working with the group as a whole. And we realized that there were frequently 
um, pockets of understanding that needed to be filled. There was training that basically could knock out multiple problems by giving people a concept and a way of working with things. And so um, I don't like to have to reinvent the wheel 15 times. I think it's a waste of time and energy and resources. My preference is to be strategic, be intentional, be effective, and basically address the problem head on as much as possible within the context of what people need and what they want. And basically that style of working with people proved to be very effective, um, very efficient, very you know cost efficient for sure. And at the end of the day, people felt better because everyone was on the same page. They were speaking the same language. They could talk about things on a common ground. So later on, I realized that this wasn't just something that um, could be addressed through the traditional role of just a psychologist. This was more of a consulting role. So although, yes, I do have that uh, practice, I do have that side that still does your traditional therapeutic things, um, a lot of my training was leveraged and my skill set was leveraged to be able to help people in the consulting world. Clearest Advantage came together um, as an idea and formulated in 2013. So we started the business then. We formally incorporated in 2014. And we narrowed down what it is exactly we wanted to do to help other businesses and how we could leverage the strengths that we have professionally mm -hmm. as well as our experiences. So 2013 was the formal beginning of Clearest Advantage. And we have been moving along since then, developing and streamlining and identifying the best ways to serve our clients. The advantages of this form of business ownership is our partnership, our skills, our years of experience coming together in a blended fashion of consultancy that's very unusual. I think that we um, take into consideration the client needs combined with the experiences that we have, sort of putting on their shoes and standing in their place, as well as considering their pain points. Sometimes other consultants uh, have an idea already set, they've done their analysis, and they go in from that perspective. We prefer to hear the client's pain points loudly, clearly, and address them strategically after we understand the best way to help them. We first started marketing our business by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. It was by getting great referrals where a satisfied customers told their other friends, associate businesses, what we provided them with. We wrote a book um, and that became more or less known, The Five Levels of Greatness, and we developed a website, but then we moved forward and did some other things. Right. We, we basically had to catch up with the uh, learning curve of technology, which is something that, um, you know, if you in business today, you have to have the ability to reach your people and have a world perspective and a world view. So, um, you know, social media, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, um, all of those avenues. But I think the area that we enjoyed the most was doing the radio broadcasting. I think that's where we had the most fun. Yeah. And, um, and we were able to connect with people that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the ways that we've reached out to people and have them be known. Um, we're actually in the process right now doing some fun things with our website. Um, and again, um, our book and um, CDs and a few other things um, to just cater to the variety of people that want to hear about things in a variety of ways. Technology and the internet has impacted consultancy in a variety of different ways, but the one thing is that all consultants have to go through a learning curve to use it efficiently. So at Clearest Advantage, we've had to learn how to use social media as well as simple smartphone technology to maximize contact with our clients, to maximize meeting people where they are, as well as lengthening our reach. This is a worldwide web and we have to be able to effectively interact with someone wherever they are. So this is consultancy in a different level, in a different way, but it's what the future has. People are able to find us in a glimpse 
due to technology. So it's easy to find us. And, you know, most people today, as soon as you mention a name, as soon as you mention a website with smartphones, people are able to immediately find you and get a sense of how who you are and what you provide. You know, we've been very fortunate to have a good variety of mentors and business coaches over the years as we develop business and starting the business. So we have actually had uh, mentors and coaches in each facet of business building as well as conducting business. So um, we have uh, someone who deals with industrial organization and actually does consulting in that area. We have someone else who is top notch in sales as well as um, body language. We also have someone who is excellent at um, developing uh, sponsorship and connections in those areas. And we even have someone who helps us learn and go through the social media curve. So mm -hmm. we have um, developed and been drawn to going to top people in their area of expertise to be able to coach and give us guidance as we grow um, so that we can be on our own game and make sure that we're doing um, the best that we can do. But those components to building the business have been um, priceless. And having people who are excellent in those areas have been absolutely priceless. Yeah. You know, we have a few ethical concerns that we um, really stay on top of. And really, it has to do with being considerate of whoever we're working with. For instance, my background in chaplaincy, there are some companies that want to include a spiritual aspect of how to work with their employees, but then there's some companies that don't. So really, it depends upon what a company wants, what's important to them, and then whatever that is, we flow with it. You know, it's all about the goals that a company wants to reach. And so that's really what we're focused on. Right. I, I think that it's really important to be where the company is mm -hmm. and to know that um, they're the ones that we're supporting and helping and strategizing with. Um, the one thing that uh, I always make sure that um, clients and customers understand is drawing the line for myself as a licensed psychologist because um, we... Uh, help people and not everyone's in the state that we're in and so I have to make sure that even though yes I am Dr. Allen and licensed psychologist that my role with them is not the psychologist I am the consultant um, and that is my role and if they have that need or I think that's appropriate then I would definitely refer them out to um, someone who's wonderful in the area that could actually focus on that part of it and then get back to what it is that I'm there to do. But that's something that I always make clear about with people so there's no confusion about me um, practicing uh, my profession um, in a way that doesn't line up with ethical guidelines. Mm -hmm. And HR, um, when it comes to financial services, though I have a background in financial services, I'm not there as a financial advisor or to give advice in reference to insurance. That's something that HR would provide and I'm aware of, but um, I understand that's not my role. Well, these ethical um, problems, or you would say situations or concerns, you know, that's something that we've decided from the beginning of our company of how we were going to serve people and work with people. And so, you draw the boundaries, you understand, you listen, and then you're there to serve the client. It's what they want and not a question of mm -hmm. what, you know, what we may have an interest in. Our interest is to serve them. And it ends up being very clear when you draw the boundaries up front. Um, it doesn't take much. And I think it's much appreciated to kind of put that out there up front on the table so that everyone's on the same page. So... Um, we have not had any ethical issues um, in working with people because it's something that we handle up front. You know, in addition to um, the actual services we provide on site with um, clients and customers, 
we have things that enhance the very thing that we're training and teaching and building upon. So we do have um, a book that we've written, Five Levels to Greatness, um, Insights to the Competitor's Edge. We also have CDs um, that go into a different level of depth for that program, um, as well as uh, coaching and masterminding and micro lessons that we offer for people to be able to have a booster shot almost to what it is that we teach and train and for the work environment, learning that skill set, um, it's a great additive for you to really get and work on um, those things that you want to work on on your own. Um, it's one thing to get training and some other things that work, but again, we're trying to teach skill sets and work with people so that it generalizes to other areas of your life. So those are the things that we've created. So the person who really is motivated to do well and excel, they have the opportunity to do well and excel in their own pace and at their own time. You know, I would attribute my success to really having a heart for people. I mean, from the time that if I just look back over my life, I really wanted people to win and to be successful. And as a result of that, I would come up with creative ways, creative strategies, creative answers, willing to look outside the box, really listen and get to understand what they want and then to pursue it which is really fun and then to really win i just love to see people win and so i'm always going to be creative and looking at a way of how to make that happen so that's what i would attribute my success to being you know when i think about the things that um i've had feedback for that clients said that they um, enjoyed or liked it was usually those aha moments where um, I saw the areas of danger that they weren't able to see or thinking about it that way. Um, I love having a strategic plan that looks at the things that um, work for you, the things that could um, be at risk for you, and the things that um, will have you be out in front. So um, that creative process of looking at the total package and doing it in a very efficient way where they understand here's where we are, here's where you don't want to be, here's where we're going, and you know what, this looks like the most efficient way to get there based on what it is you want. That line of thinking in that process um, has brought me a lot of success in working with clients, and it's also been the thing that helps me uh, know that they're getting what it is that they want, which for me is a win. You know, we're located in Atlanta, Georgia, and Atlanta is estimated to grow by one million people mm -hmm. until 2020. So Atlanta is a growing place to live. Uh, we're conveniently located next to the airports. We can get there and fly anywhere. And it's actually been my home for 20 years, and I enjoy it. Yes. There's a lot of um, opportunity, transition, and transformation in Atlanta. Um, I've been here for a long time, and interestingly enough, I had an opportunity years ago to live on the West Coast, and I did for a brief period of time, but I still found myself coming back to Atlanta because I just viewed it as um, a place where there's a lot of opportunity. Um, a lot of people were um, transitioning, migrating, and coming. Um, and Atlanta's taken shape in a lot of different forms. I think it's gotten more culturally diverse over time. I think it's gotten more uh, expansive. There are a lot of corporations that have made their headquarters here. So I think that it's unique in that um, Atlanta allows you to be as close to a city or as far away as you want, and yet you can still have the best of both worlds. I think that a lot of corporations have moved here and business is um, vital here because you do have that flexibility in location as well as people. So um, when I had my choices of where to go, I made the decision to come back to Atlanta because I just viewed it as home. But more than anything, I viewed it as really having an opportunity and a variety of opportunities more than anything. Our business is unique because although we provide services to companies, leadership, and staff, we wanted anybody and everybody to be able to benefit from our services. 
So we wrote the book, Five Levels to Greatness, Insights to the Competitive Edge. It's a fun and interesting book that gets you to look at yourself to get insights as to how to go about getting on your A-game and staying on your A-game on your own, whether your company or any one of your leaders do anything to help you stay on your A-game. You have the ability and the motivation to go ahead, get that tool, get that resource, make use of it, and make advancements where you are. And our commitment to having everyone be excellent was part of the reason why that that was initiated. And I think that's different because most consultants focus on the focus of the office, the focus of the business, and what's at hand, which is not a bad thing, but we are really committed to having everyone do well. Therefore, we gave something that everyone could use and everyone could benefit from. Part of what we included in there was looking at the work-life balance. You know, no one is really satisfied unless they are enjoying what they're doing at home and what they're doing at work. So we include what can you do to set up your life so that you are really satisfied? What are the key components that you need to have? And when I say balance, it's not perfect balance. It's a work in progress. But at the same time, it's what are those key things that keep you going? Now, what's so important about that is having those key things in place before some kind of event happens in life. It allows you to move forward. It allows you to bounce back. So we create neat ways of keeping that balance and it may be unique to you. So take a look at the book, but also as you work with us, we'll come with something creative that works just for you. You know, doing this interview um, actually caused me to just think about all the things that, that you know on a day-to-day -day basis that you have in your mind and you need to articulate. I mean, and, and it's been great because we are a unique business and um, we are unusual as far as coming together as a team. So it's been fun being able to articulate and share that with people. I think the, the interview is fun um, just by the fact that it helps us tease out the different aspects of our business and who we are and how we got to where we got to. Um, most people want to elevator pitch, quick pitch, and that's fine. Um, but I don't always know if uh, when you look at a business, you understand who the people are behind the scenes. We are not the beginning and end of our business. We are the faces that are seen the most with our business. But we're fortunate enough to have a team behind us to help support us as well as to do those different areas that um, maybe there's different specialties that need to happen in. So um, this was a good experience for us to be able to speak to uh, the business, the beginnings, where we are, where we want to go. Hi, my name is Dawn Allen. And shortly, you will have an opportunity to meet one of our new clients, Jose Luis. Jose Luis is responsible for hiring investigators and legal couriers who are also bilingual. Jose Luis contacted us at our website, www.clearestadvantage.com, to help him in the process to figure out a quick and efficient way to identify people who have the qualities that were needed, especially since there's a need for them to be bilingual. He needed to find people that he could identify as being uh, trustworthy, responsible, and a variety of other personality traits that are important for his line of work since there's a requirement to have high standards, keep confidential information, be reliable, and be flexible. Jose Luis was trying to understand the best approach for searching people out and the best approach to identify a team that can be built up with several people. Business is growing quickly. And the people that he works with in the firm want to nail down good choices and good options to move forward. So shortly, you'll see just a glimpse of how at Clearest Advantage, we work with our clients to tackle those types of problems. Jose Luis, thank you for coming today. And uh, thank you for taking the time to share your story with others. And we had an opportunity to talk earlier. And essentially, you need to find and develop a team of people to help you uh, establish and grow the business.
And so um, it's an important job and responsibility that the people that you're looking to do this job and the team you're looking to build does. It requires a lot on their part, but there are certain characteristics that you need to have and identify to make your team strong. Yes. So um, tell me a bit about uh, who you're looking for to be in this role as a legal investigator or a legal courier, because this person is working with the attorneys that you and your company work with. Yes. So basically, uh, what I'm looking for is just a person that uh, can be slash available, mm -hmm. you know, just to make appointments with uh, the clients, the mm -hmm. clients of the, the the law firms that I work with. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not a, you know, per se, eight hour job or anything like that. It's, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. you know, they need yeah. to be available mm -hmm. just for calling persons and, and making appointments, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not... Is not uh, involving all the day work, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they do have to, you know, be available to call and to, you know, get a get an appointment and, and talk with the client mm -hmm. and be a little aware of what the client wants and needs because we, in a certain point, represent the lawyer, yes. so we want to get that client to the law firm. Yes. Yes. So, so basically, you know, that we we are the kind of like the hook mm -hmm. that's gonna bring bring the business bring the big business to the law firm. Yes. So everything is 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 on um, the client to be happy. You know? Excellent. That's that's what we want. Okay. So so hearing you correctly, you need people who are flexible in their hours. Mm -hmm. You need people who are able to communicate eff effectively. Yes. You need people who are able to be sensitive to the client's needs. Yes. And they have to maintain a level of integrity and understanding that essentially you are working with attorneys to get adequate and accurate information. Yes. Tell me a little bit about um, when uh, one of your couriers and investigators, when they actually go to the person's home, because that's essentially what the attorneys need your company to do. Go yes. to the person's home, and then what are the details of, of what it is they have to do once they get there? Okay, so basically, uh, we attend, uh, what is it, uh, motor vehicle injuries or personal mm -hmm. injuries mm -hmm. or workers' compensation. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a certain information that we need to gather. Okay. It's a, it's a questionnaire, so they they have they have to ask a certain questions and and um, they they could be uh, a little bit uh per se personal information. That's why it has to be something that, you know, is making aware of uh, of the needs of of the client, right? So uh, we had, we need to gather that information. And, and excuse me, does that information typically come uh, through technology? Is it an iPad or something along those lines? Person uses it, right? Yes. Okay. okay. So so we we had we work for with, with the iPad, mm -hmm. and uh, all the information is right there. We just fill it up and okay. And, uh, and you know they have to sign the contract for mm -hmm. they want to hire the lawyer as well. We have to take pictures. If it's a car is involved, or mm -hmm. we can see uh, injury, Any injuries, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, uh, you know, take pictures of the IDs of the person that we're trying to to see the client. So they also need to be comfortable with technology, mm -hmm. detail oriented, and be able to again respect the privacy of the client. And bilingual. That's okay. important. Thing. And bilingual, which it's is one of the, which is one of the main reasons why you get wonderful business yeah. <laughs> because bilingual, which is key and sometimes difficult to find in that arena, which I think is awesome. So the 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 thing that I hear is that you also have a unique niche with being able to do that because you're you're coming to the person's home and then you're culturally meeting the need because you're speaking Spanish, and so it sounds like a great opportunity for the right person but it also sounds like it could be a very difficult situation if you have the wrong person on your team yes. so that's what we're, we're here to, to prevent so um in talking with you earlier and i had you go through uh two brief assessments mm -hmm. and the purpose of that was for um clearest advantage to have a good understanding 
of uh, what the characteristics are for your team building, as well as what the characteristics are for the people who would be in a leadership role. Now, uh, although people have to be fairly autonomous, it sounds like you definitely have to work together with the other members of a team, and then you are essentially designing and creating the team that you're trying to hire to be able to fulfill this. And you know all of the ins and outs, and you know the things that are uh, difficulties versus you know how smoothly everything should run. So um, part of the reason why we did the assessment and, and, and it was to give you the experience as well of what that would look like so you know the people you were trying to hire, what they would actually go through, but also get information based on the description you gave of the job and what it is that you want, the kind of person that would end up being perfect for the job. Now, just from the experience and what you went through, how long did it take you to go through both assessments? What, uh, what do you mean the, the assessments, the questions that we went through where you no, answered. Oh, there was uh, what, five minutes. For each um, one? Yeah. Pretty quick. Yes. Okay. And, and, um, and when you went through that experience, just uh, what would you expect or how much information would you expect to get out of it typically? I mean, you, you have, um, it opens your eyes, you know, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of what you are and what are your answers and, and um, what kind of person are you looking for with this? Were you surprised at how much information came out of it? Yes. yes. <laughs> Did it make it easier for you to have an aha moment on the characteristics that you were looking for to be yeah. able to do that? Yeah. Yes. And so, um, and so in a more formal fashion, <clears throat> what we like to do is get that idea. And so the key things that were important based on the responses of the assessment you did for a person that would fill that role was someone who um, had a great level of integrity, imagination, inspiration, and also was bold. They had the characteristics of somebody who was an advocate which I thought was awesome because even though you didn't describe necessarily the job as the advocate, that person has to have the willingness and the leadership role to be bold in their job, to be very straightforward, and to be an advocate for the person you're getting information from. And that's probably one of the best ways to characterize that. Um, and uh, the other thing for the leadership uh, piece, we realized that it would be very important for the person to be authentic have high levels of integrity, be very dependable, and what's described as audacious, being strong in those characteristics and not really wavering, which again would make sense because this is a person who is entering into a sensitive area, a sensitive time, someone is injured, they need someone to be respectful, but again, be that advocate role. So, uh, our role is to combine information based on assessments that we get and also be able to help you build teams and also be able to help you understand uh, what characteristics may not be as helpful in team building as well. The goal is to leverage someone's strengths and at the same time understand how the weaknesses can sort of play out that would hinder their progress. So for you in this situation, if you were um, hiring a team and seeking, of course you would have the basic listing of the characteristics someone needs, flexibility in time, bilingual, and those are the basics of the job. Mm -hmm. But you would also can do a few things that would help a person for you to kind of see what is your real level of interest. Sometimes people today just apply for a job. Everybody, you know, just a job. It, you know, it sounds good. Okay, I can do this. So... I would recommend that when you put a job posting out there, the first thing you do is actually have the link where the person goes and does the quick assessment that will only take them, like you said, about five or ten minutes. That initial read actually gives you an indication, number one, is what is their intention to really find the job? Are they just applying? Because you don't know. Some people have to apply for a job for unemployment or for some other things. But you really get an idea of what the person's intention is if they follow through and do the assessment. That immediately gives you a snapshot and that lets you know, hey, they are actually genuinely interested. Then when you get the results from that, if you actually have someone <clears throat> who meets the basic characteristics, it's not a matter of perfection at every end. But there are some things that we know that they have to have and has to show up. So they have to be, you know, authentic. They have to have the integrity. They have to be able to be strong. Some of the things that you would probably um, want to temper is if you got results back that so, someone is 
overly zealous or they're overly analytical. Um, that might be hard to see. How can someone be too analytical? But if you combine it with the home environment and someone is too analytical, the person who's injured can almost feel like they're being investigated at that moment as opposed to collecting information, as opposed to forming a relationship with the attorneys. Because essentially, the attorney is saying, hey, you represent me. Mm -hmm. And you, in turn, have your team that represents you and represents your company. So a person who can strike a balance between collecting that information combined with making sure they get the details, but not feeling like the person is being investigated for whether they're telling the truth, not telling the truth, is going to be important. And sometimes some of the people that you need, they have the great characteristics you need, but there's also a tendency to be on the overly zealous side or overly analytical side. So that will need to be tempered for anyone that you hire. Um, the other thing, too, is that you also need to have someone have realistic expectations. <clears throat> Um, the information is needed. The, the attorney, you're trying to be the bridge and connecting to make the case. But they also have to realize this person just had something very upsetting happen to them. So if someone is having some trouble remembering the dates or the time or some of the details, they have to have a side that recognizes I need to be patient, give them a moment, and be willing to even come back if need be. That doesn't mean that they can't close the deal because you, your, your people have a very interesting role. They're, they're sensitive, but they're analytical. They're collecting information, but essentially they are closing that deal for the attorney that is trying to do this. Yes. So it, it takes a good skill set, good communication. But I say those things because you can actually get someone to apply for a job and they seem wonderful in their level of detail. But it would be extremely important for you to make sure they have that sensitivity and wisdom to balance their interactions with people. So again, the person is comfortable, especially since... They were allowed into their home, and culturally, that can feel very intrusive to come into someone's home. So, so having me say this, how does that sound to you? Good, good. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm looking for. Great. See, look, and you got all of that, what, in 10 minutes? <laughs> Just a little bit of effort and work. But that's what we try to do. Um, we try to give information to employers, and we do give information to employers, and we do it step by step. You, in taking just the snapshot version, we were able to extract that to help you understand how to build your team. Yes. There are longer versions of the test, and that in turn would be something that you would do with your narrow pool of saying, okay, I've got these 10 positions to fill, I've got these 15 candidates that are good, and you can say, okay, we want to do the longer version of this evaluation so we can get more detail and really prioritize out of this 15, where comes the 10? And then at that point, you have options to say, okay, I've got my team. And we can even do some training to build your team and structure to highlight those things because you still have to uh, train and shape people to be able to really fill the shoes that you need them to fill. Yes. So how does that sound with me saying that? It sounds really good. Good. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, share your results and your experience with us. And as always, the clearest advantage loves helping their clients. Thank, thank you. you.